Married at First Sight. Ooh, this was decision day and I was actually kind of surprised because there was a few of those couples that I truly thought wouldn't stay together. That's what I want to talk about today. Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Debbie. I'm the She in Sheality TV and today I want to talk about Married at First Sight's Decision Day. Okay, so it's been eight weeks and this is the day when the couples decide that they're either going to stay married or they're going to get a divorce. Um, <clears throat> truthfully speaking, there are more than a couple of those couples that I thought would choose to split. Um, let's talk first about Ryan and Clara. Clearly, Clara is head over heels for Ryan. But Ryan, I don't so much get that feeling from him. Like, I, I do get the feeling that he's attracted to her, he likes her, you know, they get along well, whatever. He is still, he still feels a little bit reserved, but not anything that she would have to complain about. Her issue was that he's never said, I love you to a woman. And I mean, you know, that's just, if that's his thing, that's his thing. But... Um, I'm sh I feel like eventually he will. Now, this, you know, they, they come into the room and the three experts are sitting there and, you know, they talk about how the relationship went over the course of the eight weeks. And I kind of thought, you know, I, I was positive that Clara would, would choose to stay married to Ryan, right? She's made no secret about how she feels about him. But Ryan, I wasn't so sure. I, I actually thought that he would decide to get a divorce but yeah no he decided to, that he would he 150 percent wanted to stay married to Clara which is great because I feel like you know he just needed a little bit more time to kind of get his bearings he wanted to take it slowly and I mean there's nothing wrong with that but I don't know there's something about their relationship that made me feel like he wasn't clear about that from the beginning. Like he was much more clear about that on decision day than he was when they got married. Do you know what I mean? Because this whole time Clara has been um, iffy about the fact that he's never said I love you to a woman. But anyways, they decide to stay together, which is great because I actually like them together. I like, I really like Clara and I really like Ryan. So I actually really do hope that it works out for them. Let's talk about Haley and Jacob. Obviously, these two didn't stay together. I don't even know why they stuck it out till the end of the eight weeks. Jacob, probably from the third or fourth week, just felt like he had completely checked out. Like, I don't know. I think maybe because they actually were intimate, like they consummated the marriage on the first night. And I feel like for him, that was his first way to measure the marriage. Like, do you know what I mean? To measure whether or not the relationship was going to go well or they were going to stay married or whatever. But it apparently, after that night, everything just kind of tanked. They didn't maintain whatever momentum they had from the first night. Now, mind you, they were drunk the first night. Uh, according to Haley, they were, you know, they were completely blitzed. So, I don't know. It... it feels like he had completely checked out um yeah she said some things that he didn't like and he said some things that she didn't like and i don't know why these two couldn't have just agreed like yeah i get it you're in front of a camera but can't you just agree that you know what let's just make the best of it we don't know whether or not this is going to work out or this doesn't appear to be working out but you know what i like you as a person so let's let's have a, let's build a friendship first and see where it goes from there rather than trying to force a marriage-like relationship, right? I think that Jacob expected them to have a marriage-like relationship or a a married couple relationship, and she was just not ready for that. Like, let's not forget, she, Haley, had not been, she, what did she say? She, she hadn't dated for seven years. Honestly, I've said it before, I'll say it a hundred times, there, I don't, I don't believe that there's anyone they could have set her up with that she would have worked out with because come on seven years is a long time 
it's a really long time to not be in an intimate relationship with someone and then dive into a marriage. Like, I think that for some of the couples, that's the problem. They have the ceremony, now they've got the piece of paper and these little rinky-dink rings, and they expect to be able to relate to each other as a married couple, like as husband and wife. They don't think about the fact that normal husbands and wives or normal people who get married in a normal setting, they know each other. They've known each other for some time, unless, you know, it's an arranged marriage, but they know each other. So I don't know why they expect that they should be able to behave like a married couple, like a normal, and I say that, I don't know how many times I've said that word, like to behave like a normal married couple, right? You can't behave like a normal married person with someone that you don't know. You don't know him, not unless, even if that's your culture, you've got to have some, you know what I mean? There's going to be a natural barrier, right? So I don't know. Needless to say, Haley and Jacob did not work out. They decided to get a divorce. Um, Pastor Cal asked Jacob if Haley said that she was should be, would be willing to give it another chance. Would Jacob take her up on it and he, or something or some such thing like that? I'm paraphrasing. And Jacob said, well, we gave it eight weeks and it didn't work. So, you know, he's pretty much done. And truthfully, I can't say that I blame him. Like, dude, you gave him someone who had not been in a relationship for seven years. I don't feel like she's ready to be in a relationship. And I, I that's not that's no shade on her. That's just it is what it is, right? I said in one of my previous videos that I truly believe like this season feels like they cast it differently than they did previous seasons. This season, I feel like they cast based on the couple's differences. So they put couples together who were complete opposites to see if it would work, right? So for instance, Vincent and Brianna. Vincent told the, you know, in the, in the interview process, Vincent said that he didn't want to be paired with someone who was straightforward, right? So he didn't want someone who was um, outspoken or like he said, his words, straightforward. And what do they give him? Brianna, whose family describes her as being bossy. Now, if that's not straightforward, I don't know what is. Speaking so, of them, let's move on to Vincent and Brianna. So at some point in this episode, Vincent and Brianna are talking, you know, talking about it, how their, what their relationship was going and everything. And Dr. Viv goes, she like jumps up, she goes, opposites really do attract. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that's what you did. I knew that's what you were doing. I knew that you guys paired these people based on the fact that they were complete opposites. This was an experiment. It feels to me like this was an experiment, right? Because everybody's different. Everybody was polar opposites like you know Jacob and Haley all Jacob wanted to do was be married and Haley hadn't been in a relationship for seven years so and so, oh, I'm gonna get ahead of myself but anyway Vincent and Brianna they're talking and clearly they get they got along really well and the point where I thought they might not stay together was where like close to the end of their eight weeks and Vincent I don't know how many times he brought up the fact that he told them in the interview process that he didn't want someone who was straightforward and he said actually used the words turn off he said when i when your family told me you were bossy it was a turn off what woman wants to hear that she's her husband is turned off by something that is a personality trait that she has right so she was kind of taken aback by that but he said it more than one time in the last two weeks right so that made me think oh, these two are not gonna stay together i don't care how well they get along i don't feel like these two are gonna stay together but come decision day you know they talked about oh i admire this about her and i admire this about him and he makes me feel this way and blah 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 and i know that he said that you know he didn't want someone who was straightforward but i've learned that you know i don't have to be blah 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 whatever and she, Brianna feels like him not wanting someone who is straightforward is making her learn things about herself, right? At first she said that she didn't want to 
change who she was for someone else, right? And then in the next sentence, she completely contradicts herself and says that she's, but she disguises it as her learning things about herself. I'm like, okay, wait, I thought you just said you didn't want to change who you were for someone else. And now you're saying that you're learning things about yourself, which means, you know, and then she goes on to say that, you know, she can be, you know, less bossy, less aggressive, less whatever. And I'm just like, okay, so you're going to change who you are for someone else, right? Whatever. That is all about her. She's happy with that. Good on her. Needless to say, they decide to stay together which is okay, but when does Vincent say that, you know what, I know that I can be a big baby sometimes and I, um, you know, I whine and I, I go and sulk in a corner when I don't feel comfortable doing something. How about you change that, Vincent? And she, Brianna doesn't mention that, right? She doesn't say, you know, he, he has his ways when he's not comfortable. He turns into a six-year-old and I would like that to change. But yeah, whatever. They decide to stay together. So, okay, good for them. Let's move on to Paige and Chris. Paige and Chris. Oh, God. Okay. So they come in and needless to say, Paige and Chris are were and are a shit show. Like, I feel like at, by this point, they're just looking to stay in front of the camera because they get to the um the decision making room and the three experts are sitting up front and they ask them you know do they know what they want to do and like they're just they're talking about what they like and don't like about each other or what they like about each other because they never say what they don't like about each other but they're saying what they like about each other and chris has some bs like she's a strong woman and she's uh the best thing that i didn't appreciate the best thing that ever happened to me that I didn't appreciate. Again, I'm paraphrasing because I really, my ears kind of, my ears close when he comes on the screen. I don't want to hear his voice. I don't even want to see his face. But he actually says like when the experts ask them if they're going to get married or stay together, because be, I don't even know why they asked the question. Um, they, Chris goes, uh, they look at each other and there's a long silence. And Chris goes, uh, we're undecided. I almost turned it off. I was like, you know, and even the experts are like, come on, come on, like really? And so Dr. Viv says, now you're, pl now, now you're playing with her and you're playing with us. And you know what I think Chris's issue is? Here's his issue with Paige in a nutshell. And tell me if you think I'm wrong. His issue with Paige in a nutshell is, like he said at the beginning, he's not physically attracted to her. And okay, fair. But he's not physically attracted to her, but he likes the fact that she is in love with him. He likes the attention that he gets from her. He likes how she treats him. And he doesn't want to let her go because she will let him take advantage of her to the moon and back. And she will do shit for him and she will, you know, she'll dote on him and she'll treat him like someone who actually cares about him. And he doesn't want to let that go, but he doesn't feel the same way about her. He says, I have feelings for Paige. And yeah, he might have feelings for Paige, but they're not feelings of love or affection or care or any of those other things that you should have when you're married to another person. Those feelings are feelings of narcissism and self-centeredness he does not love Paige he loves how Paige makes him feel period he's not in love with Paige now I know you guys will let me know in the comments if you agree and if you actually think that pa that Chris really actually loves Paige as someone that he could be married to let me know that too but I honestly think that he Chris is in love with Chris and Chris is in love with the way that Paige treats him. She makes him feel loved. She makes him feel seen. That's what Chris likes about Paige. But otherwise, he's already said he's not physically attracted to her. That issue that he has with him being physically attracted to her is him struggling because he's not physically attracted to her. So he's 
feeling like, well, I don't want to like bring her out with my friends or my family because I don't think she's attractive, right? So I don't, I don't want to be judged. I don't want my friends and family to judge me because I don't think she's attractive and I don't want them to go, well, what's she do? What's he doing with her? Right? He ain't no prize. Like Chris, get over yourself. You ain't a prize. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you ain't a prize. So anyway, they decide that they are undecided. And and as, as far as Paige goes, she likes it when Chris pretends that he has feelings for her. She likes that attention and that she doesn't feel like she wants to let go. And she feels like, you know, if we really work on it, listen, people, if you are not getting along, if all you do is fight, if he says, I'm not physically attracted to you right from the jump. Yeah, no, you, yeah, no, have some, have some shame, have some pride, cut him loose and Paige, at the end of the day, like at the end of the process, Paige actually does says, you know, I, I think I want to go ahead and get a divorce, right? But I think that Chris is just so self-centered. He's going to keep chipping away at her because he needs the attention. He needs the attention that Paige feeds him. That's why he won't let it go. And Paige likes that he needs that from her. That's what this whole Chris and Paige thing has been about, right? So yeah, they, I don't know, who cares? They, on on camera, they're, they're divorced, but I, I don't care. I don't care, next. Let's talk about Eric and Virginia. Here's another couple that polar opposites, okay? She is a, a party girl who likes to drink four or five nights a week till she's blackout drunk and then crash at a guy friend's house and he's a pilot so these two lifestyles these two personality types could not be more opposite couldn't possibly be more opposite but they put them together and they those were their fights you know all of her guy friends and the fact that she loves to drink god knows how often and he's very responsible. Oh, and she doesn't want to move into his place and all, just a whole host of things that are just like, dude, if, if you guys were dating before you got married, you wouldn't have gotten married because you are completely different personality types, completely different lifestyle types. But because you think because you got put together in this process that, oh, we must have got put together for a reason. What is it with people who think that, yeah, I believe that everything happens for a reason, but that reason does not have to be you got put together so that, so you must have to stay together. That's not the reason. The reason could be, yo, the universe, God and her universe are testing you, right? To see if you have the good sense to let this shit go when you should let this shit go. And if you don't have the good sense to let it go, well, you know, that's on you. But yeah, these two always fighting always 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 fighting but at the end of the day they decided also to stay together so yeah i don't well, know I, I thought for sure eric and virginia would split because they're these are lifestyle differences that are not negotiable i thought that Brent, vincent and brianna would split would split because of the whole straightforward women are a turnoff thing i honestly i thought they would split i was wrong um, wasn't sure that Paige and Chris would split. Wasn't sure. Thought that he would like try to reel her back in for sure. And that she would be weak and go, yeah, well, you know, maybe we should go to therapy. That's what I thought would happen with those two. And like I said, don't care. Don't, I don't care where they are now. Don't care if they stayed apart. Don't care if they got back together. They, as far as I'm concerned, are wasting my time. And Ryan and Clara, yeah, I kind of thought they would split because, you know, Ryan and the whole I love you thing, and, you know, they haven't, they still haven't consummated the marriage. I thought that, you know, they would both kind of, they'd be okay with splitting over those things. But, you know, I was, I was wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. That's it for Married at First Sight's Decision Day. My name is Debbie. This is Shiality TV. I will see you next time.